in den letzten Jahren. In recent years, there has been such a clear trend that invasive ventilation is being used less and less, preferring non-invasive ventilation instead. I.e., most of the premature infants we ventilate today are being ventilated in a non-invasive way. As far as the methods of non-invasive ventilation are concerned, we have to differentiate a few things. We'll start by looking at the interface to the child's airways via which we ventilate. There are the so-called prongs, two short tubes that are inserted into the child's nostrils, or the masks that are put over the child's nostrils, and both methods work well. Both have their challenges. The main problem is that because we have a foreign body in the face of the child, and the skin of these small premature babies is very sensitive, there can always be pressure marks, and therefore the best method is to switch between these two convection possibilities, that is between prongs and mask. The other different method of non-invasive ventilation is classical CPAP ventilation, in which continuous positive airway pressure is applied to the child's airways. But there is also a method of working with two different pressure levels. In medical literature, it is referred to as NIPPV, non-invasive positive pressure ventilation. And in recent years, high-flow nasal cannula has established itself as another third method. There are some studies that have actually compared the methods and have shown advantages and disadvantages. I will now leave out the high-flow nasal cannula method and refer to classic CPAP and the NIPPV. In CPAP, with two different ventilation levels, no real differences could be found. There are studies that show that it is better to ventilate with NIPPV. There are others that show that there is actually no benefit, so you have to say that the question has not been entirely answered up to now. What one would wish for, however, is that non-invasive ventilation would be synchronized with the characteristics and capabilities of the children. There is the possibility of synchronization, but this is often difficult with non-invasive ventilation, because how do we measure the air mounds of the children themselves? There is a measuring problem there. These are perhaps future prospects. We need to find solutions and thus be able to synchronize this better with ventilation. Then both NIPPV and CPAP could actually offer advantages at two pressure levels. As far as high flow is concerned, this has come to the forefront in recent years, and there are actually clinics that have been using CPAP instead of classical non-invasive ventilation right from the start. Here too, we still lack the extensive studies that show the differences, but this seems to be a very promising method. What is high flow in the end? It's nothing more than oxygen or flow, which is brought into the child's airways via a prong-like system. The big advantage of these prongs, I might say, is that they don't sit as tight as the CPAP prongs, and therefore probably cause fewer problems with the child's sensitive skin. I think this is one of the main reasons why it is so trendy, or why many institutes use this method. To this day, though, there have been comparative studies which are still contradictory. Some studies show that in certain situations it can actually replace CPAP, especially in very small, premature babies. But the skepticism is still great, or there is also data that warns about this. Another big advantage is that it is also a little more comfortable for the children and for the parents, because with high flow, the children can be handled more easily. The hose system attached to the child is not so large. That is why the child seems to be so much easier to handle. Bubble CPAP is a very simple method to apply to children. 
What do I need for it? I need a blender where I can adjust the oxygen concentration, a flow meter where I can regulate the flow, and finally, a flow of fresh gas, which is introduced into a vessel filled with water. Using a tube that I have in this vessel, I can regulate, depending on the depth of introduction, how much pressure is applied to the child's airways. As I said, this is a very simple system, which can and is used in countries that do not have the large financial resources at their disposal. There are studies that compare bubble CPAP ventilation with CPAP ventilation via ventilators and the elementary differences cannot be determined. So, it is safe to say that you can use bubble CPAP very effectively. There are a few advantages to using a ventilator, but it is a seriously feasible alternative. Even with small premature babies at the limit of their viability, it is worth trying to administer non-invasive ventilation therapy. And if one notices that the child needs more support, then one just has to switch to the invasive method. In this context, we should perhaps also mention that in small premature babies, the reason for shortness of breath, for respiratory distress syndrome, is often a surfactant deficiency. Surfactant. This is the substance that lines and stabilizes our lungs from the inside, and premature babies are not yet sufficiently able to produce this substance themselves. There is, however, the possibility of supplying it from the outside. In the past, this was classically done using a tube, and then the surfactant was administered via this tube. Today, there are already very promising studies that administer surfactant under non-invasive ventilation also known as the LISA method, a less invasive surfactant application. It is actually possible to stabilize small premature babies with non-invasive ventilation.